The drama over the relocation of Edo State Deputy Governor Comrade Philip Schweibu's office outside of the government house may have come to an end as the letter to that effect signed by the Secretary to the State Government, Osarodion Oge, surfaced on Tuesday morning. Schweibu had denied knowledge of the relocation of his office on Monday when he was locked out, noting that he had not been served a letter to quit the government house premises for another location. The embattled deputy governor also said that only the civil servants were instructed through a letter to move into the new office. The letter by Ogie addressed to the deputy governor stated that Governor Godwin Obasaki had directed that the Shuaibu office should be relocated to the new office address. Well, joining us to discuss this is a People's Democratic Party chieftain in Edo State, Honorable Shedrak Udubai. Uh, Honorable, good evening and thank you for joining us. I think that you're muted. Please unmute yourself so we can hear you. Okay. We can hear you. It's so noisy where you are. We can barely hear you. I'm happy to be with you. Yes, okay. It's good, it's good to have you join us on the show. Let's look at the... Let's look at the situation uh, in your state. The feud between the governor and the deputy governor has continued to play out, um, you know, in the eyes of everybody across the country. And one would wonder why um, this is taking this turn. The last time you and I ha um, were on this show talking about uh, the situation, you had uh, said that uh, it was because of Mr. Shuaibu's uh, governorship ambition and that you felt that there was the hand of Esau in the situation. But here we are now. The governor of the state is asking him to relocate outside of the government house. Many people have said that this is, um, you know, a low blow and should not be seen um, to be done by the governor. Um, yes, it is under the instructions of the governor. It is exactly being done by the governor. But um, I believe they, they are making a move out of a hill. Because currently what we have is that um, the governor wants to put the office to some other use and they may have ordered the deputy governor to relocate to another office, though it's outside the government has but on number seven, Usadebe Avenue, because the governor house is at number one, Usadebe Avenue. And then proper due process was followed, instructions were given, even down to the all the staffs, the civil servants, the permanent secretaries and directors that work under the office of the deputy governor, they were duly notified. And that notification came in early enough for all of them to move. The deputy governor was aware that, yes, um, the staffs and the office had been relocated. But in between, somehow he had to come to the office that very day to make an unpleasant show of the activity of the whole happenings. Came in with a few boys who camera the event and they saw him speaking in front of the government house as though he had received no instruction or he had not gotten any prior notice to the exit of his office, to the relocation of the office. And I also wanted to be on, it's not like he is no longer the deputy governor, he is the deputy governor, and the structure, the office he had worked from before, that office particularly does not, it, it does not mean that um, for the father is no longer praying on our office, he's no longer the deputy governor. There was a time in this government, yes, uh, governor, governor Basaki's office, the office of the governor was under innovation, and they had to move in to work with the current office of the chief of staff. So it's, 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 it's I know to a large extent, people may say, okay, uh, the governor is trying to harm the deputy governor. But beyond that, I, I see this as just a mere, it, it comes to nothing when it comes to administrative uh, duties, functions, and relations. And um, th there are those who, uh, pundits who have looked at this issue and how long it's lingered. Well, at first it looked like an internal party issue, but it's gone beyond that. And, and many are saying, how does this not distract the governor from governance? Uh, could this issue have not been handled better as opposed to what we're seeing play out, especially in the media? Yes, it could have been handled better because even after the deputy governor made some strategic moves to take the case out of court, yes, he did that. And um, we were thinking that um, as a man who, to a large extent, had been a lawyer, to the governor, um, he should have engaged in extensive consultation and appeal because trust itself has been broken. So what we're expecting is for him to strategically engage with um, the stakeholders, uh, persons within government who could speak to the conscience of the governor. 
for giving a soft land, they have to see how best they can then work closely and collaboratively in this business that they have been for over seven years. And then, but to see that the man to a large extent uh, has not, they, they say the government has not given him land, but, but I, I doubt if that is the case because he's still brandy. The person who also speak for him are still grandstanding, making derogatory statements, they sounding very vindictive, uh, as though the deputy governor. Holds the, holds the knife and the yam. And I've said it's an issue of ambition, like I always say, where you all began from, it's an issue of ambition. The deputy governor wants to be governor. He has the right, he has the ill and yellable right. Every man has the constitutional right to aspire. But by and large, the governor does not want to support him. The indications are clear. And then by the logic of zoning, even though zoning as a principle of partiality is not enshrined in the constitution, there are many Democrats who believe they are related to even development, equal access to power and empowerment, that power must rotate. And then even if he's going to rotate again to a donut, he certainly won't be the local government of the former governor of the state. So those are the issues that are around it. Yes, he can aspire. But um, there are many persons who are aspiring from their house. They are not deputy governors either. And there are those who want to also have a fighting chance. So but the fact that his deputy governor gives him an edge, well, that edge should not be taken for granted. But I strongly believe that going forward, the deputy governor should be calm. It should be collected. If the office has been relocated, I would have expected you to have gone there, do some inspection, and then try to at least to assuage the mind of the governor to say yes, in as much as I have broken trust, I have rushed to court to secure a court judgment um, that could be said um, then was not really warranted. But if this comes as a punishment, let me take it and from here continue to beg and appeal. But for him to still be grandstanding, I don't think it's the best. And then when we get to this point where one person has drawn the first blood by going to court to openly uh, insult or, or try to go for even even the persons in the opposition party, even his former leader and master, Adams Ali Oshomole, who brought him into politics, had even come out openly, though he, an APC chieftain, he has reprimanded the fellowship for his actions and inactions, saying that even while he was governor, he didn't take his uh, even while he was governor, his deputy governor they had the opportunity of succeeding him, even though that one wanted to, and yet he, he wasn't taken to court that he should go back and solve his problem. So the challenge is that he appears to have gone too far. Uh, with all of his actions and inactions, his ambition appears to have been slightly unbridled. But he can continue to appeal. That's what is available to him right now. He doesn't have the capacity to call the shots. And we're going to beg and beg persons who are close to the government to ensure that they're able to restore the once uh, amiable relationship that they had. And that, that's what is available to him. And anything outside of that will only make his situation worse. I'm, I'm curious because I keep hearing you mostly say he needs to appeal. He needs to appeal. Yes, he might be the airing. Um, you know, the airing party here, but the governor is the chief executive officer. Um, should he not be the one who's trying to clean up the mess as opposed to stoking the fire? I mean, the governor, even though we hear that, oh, yes, um, people are being moved to the new address, but it's not been anywhere in history where a deputy governor uh, is relocated outside of government house. That is more like putting him in the doghouse, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like putting him in a drug house. Um, like, I, like I said before, the office of the deputy governor is institutional, it's not structural. The building where he had operated from may have been more comfortable, more pleasing, more befitting. But there's another office that we operate from, and they're not paying the time. It may just be for a short period of time. It doesn't take, during COVID 19, many persons could no longer work from their offices. They had to pull out, relocate to other private locations where they work from. And people still function. Uh, though it may not say it may not result to optimal performance, but I, I still do not see the governor say he wants to put that place to to better use. Could it be and that the governor is trying? Could it be that the governor is trying to render him redundant? Is this a way to render him redundant? Like you said, punishment, um, but render him redundant if even if he cannot sack him as the deputy governor. Redundancy. It is a question of how he chooses to function outside the office. None of his powers were taken off, the aides were fired, the, all the staffs he had were just relocated to a, a different location. Uh, yes, if the demand was aggrieved and he said he wants to punish the governor, I still won't see it as a, a punishment perhaps. Because um, there are a lot of persons who are at their positions, so they will be gladly be deputy governor even from their houses. 
So I strongly believe that the man is no longer comfortable having him close by, and he says function from it's not it's not so distant. They relocate him to another local government. I said the government house is at number one Usadebe Avenue, and the new office the governor relocated to is at number seven Usadebe Avenue. It's a government property. It was formerly the office of the procurement. That's what was used for the Edo State Procurement Office, and it's, it's still in good shape. So I strongly don't believe that it's, it's so derogatory uh, to to not be classified as redundance. Uh, or, or be reduced in terms of performance and output. It's a functional place, and I strongly believe that since he has his power and his mind, he has his aides and his support staffs, we'll still be able to produce the dividend of democracy as he would have if working from within government house. Is there is there an end to insight to this, for want of a better way to describe wahala that you know is going on? Because whether we like it or not, this is making more headlines than whatever thing that the governor. <laughs> Um, might be doing in the state. Again, um, we've known that previously there have been notable citizens in the state uh, from political and religious circles who have tried to intervene um, to put an end to this matter, but all has been done to no avail. Uh, there's not necessarily been any precedence of a deputy governor who had a, you know, an ambition that went swiftly, except if it were, he was nominated by his, you know, um, principal to hold that office. Half the time we see these fights between a governor and deputy governors across the state, um, you know, um, in different dispensations. We've seen it happen. Um, but how do you think that this can be put to an end, whether Shuaibu continues to appeal or beg uh, or, or atone for his sins or not? How, what, is there an end in sight? Yeah, I strongly believe there's an end. Um, if he is able to, he, he, he is closest. He was he had um, even prided himself as one of the closest persons to the governors in time, the governor in time past. And uh, to like the issue is also in he also is in the best position to say those persons who will be able to appeal on his behalf. Uh, for the best of my knowledge, I know fully well that the the Agda the the Archbishop of the Pilisi Diagnosis has also waded into the matter. He has spoken to some of the traditional leaders of the Bini Traditional Council. They too have waded into the matter. It's going to fade out. What I believe is that once the annual calendar comes out, the annual calendar comes out, and then the party eventually throws up a candidate, all these things eventually comes to nothing. And the deputy governor will have to fall in line. And the governor too will have to fall in line. Because at that particular point in time, it is the adult people that will not have the capacity to choose who will become governor or not. And I strongly believe that once we get to that crossroad and beyond that, they, they will both have the, this whole issue will die in natural death. And I strongly believe that also, I am not one of those persons who are finding the embassy of free to say the governor should not reconcile with the deputy governor. There's nothing in particular to be made. I also even fear for the governor. That if the government, the government should uh, choose to go rogue and say, oh, I want to now endeavor to, I want to now tear down the house that we built collectively. You also have the capacity. He's not a paperweight politician, even though he does not have the requisite capacity to become governor or to muscle himself down to the, the seat of being governor. But I strongly believe that uh, he, he has good capacity to also make some damages if he chooses to. So he should also be given the, the needed respect. And I strongly believe that the governor will not go beyond that. Uh, this, I strongly believe that he also has some good reasons by this relocation issue. If he, and, 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 I, and I also want to appeal I've done my appeal from, from the presence in corridors of power because I'm also close. I work closely within government. And I also... And also uh, I think that we have lost that connection with uh, Mr. Udu, Udu Agbai. Um, well, we have been speaking with... Uh, uh, PDP chieftain in Edo State, Honorable Shadrach Udugabai, um, on the feud between the deputy governor and the state governor. Unfortunately, um, we, he has dropped off uh, from our connection. But um, we're hoping that there is an end in sight in terms of the situation. But I want to say thank you to all of you who participated and watched the show tonight. Don't forget, we'll be back here tomorrow, uh, gracing your screens and talking about politics within and outside Nigeria. Don't forget to follow us on Plus TV Africa on YouTube to play catch up on all our previous episodes. I'm Mary Anakon. Do have a good evening. <laughs>